This is an information video about the Ulster Scots Agency's music tradition scheme for 2021. For those organisations thinking of applying to the scheme, most importantly, uh, deadline for completed applications is Sunday, the 18th of July, 2021 at 5 p.m. As always, incomplete or late applications will be rejected. The application form itself is an online one this year, just as it was for dance. Uh, it's vitally important that the email address you use for the project is a valid one and that is checked regularly as this will be the main contact point for your application to the scheme. You should bear in mind it's a competitive program. It's generally oversubscribed, particularly the music. The scoring matrix is used, which is based on the answers you give to questions one, two, and three within the application, along with the quality of your scheme of work. To make the application itself, you go to the Ulster Scots Agency website, you click on the link there to access the funding, and from that, then you will put in your name your, and your email address, and you then be emailed a link to the documents for the application. That link brings you in a copy of the guidelines, a template, scheme of work and calendar, and the application form itself. You click on the application form itself and it takes you to uh, a series of questions which you work through. Part one of the application form asks basic information about the organization. So it's asking you your organization name, your address, and then you get on to which county you're in, which council area and parliamentary constituency, and all of these are available as pull down menus. It then asks you a question about any potential previous names that you've had. So if your band has changed its name from previous, you put in there that that has happened and what your previous name was, or if that's not the case, you can click that it's not applicable. And it also asks you, have you received previous funding from the agency? Again, if that applies to you, then you should fill that the details in there. You're then asked to list your organization's officers and also the project manager for this project. Project manager role is key. Uh, the person responsible for the application and all correspondence with the agency should be the person selected as your project manager. They don't have to hold any other role in your organization. They just need to be the person who can take the application forward and can answer all the questions that there are around it. They, as I say, don't have to hold any other role within the organization. Part two, it then asks about your project. So it asks for the project title and details of where you plan to hold your tuition project. It asks, is it a strand one or a strand two project? Difference being strand two includes accredited learning um, and you can claim for the accreditation. Uh, to start your project, you have to have a minimum of five students per tutor for each musical form. Um, so if you're doing pipe tuition and drum tuition, you need to have five pipers, five drummers. And that's important because those numbers have to be sustained throughout the life of the project. And if, you know, if your numbers drop below a certain level, there is a danger that the funding can be withdrawn, certainly for the weeks that you have low numbers. Uh, your tutor itself needs to have at least three years teaching experience in terms of teaching people to play musical instruments and or relevant qualification. The tutors cannot be closely related to the signatories to the application. So brother, sister, father, mother, son, daughter. Tutors can be officers of the organization. So if it's someone within your band and holds a position within the band who is acting as the tutor, they can be they can be involved, but they can't be the project manager or the treasurer or a signatory to the application form. So you just need to keep sort of uh, clear lines between all, all those different rules. On to further details of the tuition project. So it asks what type of tuition you're, you're planning to undertake. So it can be, you know, flute tuition, pipe tuition, uh, snare drum, tenor drum, lambeg, fife. All of these are there. You can just put it on the menu and, and indicate which one you're going to deliver. Uh, the numbers taking part. So it's asking you to anticipate your numbers. 
bear in mind, minimum of five for each uh, musical tuition element, and your start date and your end date of your project. Your project can't start before the 1st of September of, of this year, and it must be finished by the 30th, before the 30th of April next year. You should bear in mind that the dates you put in as part of your calendar, those dates are to all intents and purposes set in stone. You want to make sure that you pick the dates for your tuition that you'll have as few changes as possible across the life of the project. You put in there who your tutors are going to be. Um, so if you have two tutors, there's two parts of the application to fill in, one for each tutor and what type of tuition they're providing. And remember, tutors can be officers of the organization, but they can't be the project manager, the treasurer or signatory to the application form. When you get to questions one, two, and three, um, all of this is shaped, and, and you'll see this in the guidance notes, if you read the guidance notes that come with the application form, the overall program has strategic aims, which are strategic aims set by the Ulster Scots Agency, and they are around inspiring, empowering, and engaging. So the agency wants you to identify, interpret, and animate Ulster Scots heritage, language, and culture. They want you to equip individuals and groups with knowledge and skills to engage with Ulster Scots heritage, language and culture. And they want you to reach out locally and globally to enhance friendship with people at Ulster whose primary identity is not Ulster Scots. Those are the main themes. They've been the themes for years. You can read more about them in the guidance notes. So then down to the, the important stuff within the application. Uh, these are the scoring questions. Uh, and you should notice on this presentation, you'll see maximum number of words. That's the maximum. What we're suggesting to you is most of them have a maximum of 150 words. Don't think you can get away with writing five, but equally don't think you can get it right away with, with writing 500 words. You want to keep it as, as factual, as correct, and as succinct as possible. So basically, we suggest that where you can, use bullet points. You know, Make sure you get across all the key points you need to. Remember that you might know what you're talking about, but the person assessing your application may not know. So you have to tell them. They can't guess what your project's going to do. You need to tell them. So question one, tell us what your organization has done in the last three years to promote Ulster Scots in your area. Um, and here we would suggest things like, you know, the ethos of your band. So are your band, you know, is it an Ulster Scots band Are you you know, you're delivering a musical, uh, a musical tradition associated with the Ulster Scots community, and that's very much part of the ethos of, of the band. Your repertoire, so do you play Ulster Scots music as part of what you do? Have you took part in performances or showcases, Burns Nights, for example? Um, have you played at festivals? Have you taken part in competitions? Um, and I know certainly within the pipe band world, competitions are a very, very big part of what you do. Um, what else are you doing? Are you providing an opportunity for people to learn instruments? Um, is your location uh, an Ulster Scots area? And is the quality of the tradition, or sorry, the quality of the tuition that you're providing, is that helping to promote Ulster Scots within your area? Again, maximum 150 words here. Question two. Tell us briefly about the project and how you plan to deliver it. Again, 150 words maximum. This is where you tell people about the nuts and bolts of your project. When, where, the times it's running at, who's managing it, what age ranges is it going to cater for, who's delivering, who are your tutors, how are you going to advertise the project, are you providing instruments to the new learners who want to come along, how will you recruit, tell them about the tuition, who are the people delivering the tuition, what skills do they have, how are they capable then of improving uh, the tuition outcomes? Those are all things. Again, bullet points, handy way of getting all these points across. Question three, how will this project sustain and develop the Ulster Scots culture and identity within your community? So are you involving new generations of people? Does your repertoire include Ulster Scots music or music that's associated with the Ulster Scots tradition? Are you putting on performances or showcases? And I know that's been difficult over the last couple of years, but maybe, you know, the hope is we're coming out of that and next year will be the year when we see much sort of greater engagement again in performances and showcases. I, do you take part in festivals? 
He has provided a platform for people to engage with cultural traditions. Is it an opportunity to learn new skill? Is there a demand within your community for the work that you're doing and, and for these tuition projects? Are you building on the work of previous years? So have you been delivering a tuition project over the last few years? And you want to continue to do that and help to sustain then the, you know, the cultural identity in your community. Is this a development opportunity for people? Um, are, are people coming in as absolute learners and, and developing on to be seasoned players? Is there opportunity within your tuition project even for people who came in last year or two years ago was absolute beginners, but maybe now you're helping them to develop beyond that and improve their musicality? All those are things that should be in here. Again, bullet points, you're only dealing with 150 word maximum. Question four, how have you established there's a need for the project? You know, is there a demand within your local area for the project? Is there no one else within the area who can provide something like this? Have you been delivering a project over a number of years and, and it has grown from strength to strength? Did you start off a number of years ago where you only had five people and now you've got 15 people wanting to take part? Is your area an area with an Ulster Scots population? Again, bullet points, maximum 150 words. Remember to tell people why this project is important and why, and why you are able to, to deliver this. The, the, the assessors may not have the knowledge about the project that you have. Why is your group best place to deliver the project? Again, you know, and you'll find many of these answers overlap. There's nobody else within your geographical location here who are capable of delivering this. You already have experience at delivering a previous tuition project. You have a big Ulster Scots population in your area. You just have the ability to provide the instruments for the new learners coming on board. You know, these are things that help to identify how your project is better placed to deliver it than maybe another one. Question six, what do you hope to achieve at the end of the project? Uh, and this is where you get to sell what, what you hope will happen out of the project that you're, you're going to deliver. So you want to identify here that you believe that your project will deliver learning outcomes uh, that are achievable in the time frame available, that you're going to provide a tuition project that differentiates between learners at different skill levels, you're providing progression routes, you're increasing the numbers taking part, you're increasing awareness of Ulster Scots musical traditions, and you're giving people confidence to take part in community events and, and be part of a broader community. These are all you know, things that you hope you will achieve by the end of your project. Question seven. This is a, you know, is a simple one. It's a tick box. It's a yes or a no. Um, bearing in mind, your project has to be open to the whole community. It can't just be for people who are in your band already and you're not going to let anybody else in. So if you want to take part in this, you have to tick yes. Um, question eight asks how you're going to advertise the project within your community. And there's a series of tick boxes there. So it'll say, you know, flyers, uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, series of things like that. Um, and basically what you're going to do there is you're going to tick the boxes that apply to you. This is how you're going to advertise um, that the project is running. And, you know, be realistic in this. Tell them how you're going to do it. There's no point you saying, oh, we're going to put an, an advert in the newsletter if you have no intention to put in an advert in the newsletter and you don't have the money to do so. Um, so if you say you're going to do flyers, do the flyers. Remember this. The Ulster Scots Agency have to be acknowledged in all promotional materials around the project. You'll see that in sections 18 and 19 of the guidelines. They can withhold a section of your grant if you don't do this. If you do flyers, remember to put one of the flyers aside to, to hand in later to show that you did do flyers. Uh, screenshots of your Facebook page and remember if you don't have the Ulster Scots Agency's logo get in touch with them and ask them for that so it can make sure it's featured in all the promotional material around it. Other funding question nine has your group sourced or do you intend to seek any other funding for this particular tuition please list all funding applied for or which you plan to apply for. Maximum here 200 words what you're basically saying here is you know there's a shortfall between what the agency can give you for the grant and what the actual project will cost. Where's the money coming from? If it's coming from your own funds within the band, so if you're asking people who are taking part in the chasing project to make a contribution, that's fine. You just say that in the application. Um, 
What you don't want to do is make an application to another funder as well and not tell either of them that actually you're planning to use money to run the same project uh, because that counts as double funding and it could end up with funding being withdrawn by the agency. Um, if you're funding part of it yourself, that's perfectly acceptable. You just need to let the agency know that in your application. Um, and similarly here, if there's an element within your application that relates to uh, in-kind contributions, so for example, you have a hall that's, that's available to you and it's being given to you as an in-kind contribution, so rather than having to pay a hall rental, you're being given the hall free, that will count at a later date in terms of against between the, the income and the expenditure for your project. You need to make that clear in the application that right from the start that there's an in-kind contribution. Um, this is one of the most important parts um, within the application. Um, you're asked to submit a scheme of work um, showing how you're going to uh, deliver the how, how the tuition project is going to be delivered. Each tutor must complete a separate scheme of work. So if you have a, a piping tutor and a drumming tutor, both of them are going to provide a scheme of work for what they're going to teach the people. Um, the, the form asks them to identify themselves and their skills, as well as their overall aims for this tuition project. Uh, you must upload this as part of the application, as well as the timetable. Uh, you can deliver the project, as said earlier, between the 1st of September and the 30th of April. Any proposed change to dates across that time, you must get approval in advance. Um, and within the application uh, pack that you get when you apply, there is a scheme of work template. And here's what you know, here's where uh, your tutors really need to focus on, on what they're going to do. The template itself basically lays out or expects you to provide lesson content for each week. So you're basically, the tutors are going to have to say what they're going to be doing. So they're going to have to identify what they're going to be teaching absolute beginners, what they're going to be teaching more uh, skilled players. Um, as well as le weekly learning outcomes. So you're, you know, and how ultimately overall all these weekly outcomes meet the project aims as a, as a, as a, in, in, in its entirety. Um, you also have to complete a section on how you're going to monitor the progress um, of each of the learners. So, you know, how are you assessing and recording what they're doing? Are you giving them practice work or homework? Um, in terms of the learning outcomes, you know, it can be about skills, about notes, about music, about technique, it can be about, you know, as they progress on from learning very, very basic things, how to hold the, the instrument, how to play a certain note right through to for the more, deep, the more uh, advanced learners, how you're going to improve their tunes or, 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 or what they're, you know, what they've, they've learned, build on their musical knowledge. Uh, it's really important. This element of the application is really important. This can be um, key to a decision between getting funding for your project and not. Um, and it's important here that the, you know, the tutors themselves highlight their skills um, and highlight the achievable goals that are going to come out of it for the different learners. Um, that, that sort of the tutor, a decent tutor should be able to complete the scheme of work in terms of showing how they're going to teach people and what they expect people to learn as, as the project goes on. Um, so each tutor should fill this in and provide it to you so that it can be uploaded as part of your application. Okay, we get now to the aspect around the um, income and expenditure. Um, and you're asked, you then you see a table into which you uh, have to put in all your expenditure and um, you're specifying everything. So you're putting in their tutor costs. Uh, so if you have two tutors, you'll put in their, you know, pipe tutor, flute tutor, drum tutor, whatever it is, um, your hall rental. Um, if it's a strand two project, we are going to do accreditation, include the cost for the, the accreditation. If you're providing, if you are lucky enough that some that you're getting a, an in-kind contribution in terms of maybe hall rental, you have to include that as expenditure as well. So you're putting it in there that 
there is there is actually a cost associated with the hall. Um, and this year, they're also allowing you to include um, the license for delivering remotely. So, for example, you want to use Zoom, and it's going to cost you a certain amount of money, you know, to buy the license to do Zoom tuition. You can include the cost up to a maximum of £130 within your application this year, and, and that will be considered as valid expenditure. You have to select the currency. The currency must remain the same throughout the project. The, the application, so whether you're applying in sterling or in euro, um, you put the, you pick that at the start and that follows through right throughout it. Um, and at the bottom of that table, then you should have a total expenditure for the project. Your income, again, here you're going to specify all sources of proposed in, income, include your group contribution. So if you're asking the learners to pay money each week, tot that up, put that in. If there's an in-kind contribution, uh, around the hall rental, you include that as well as income, and that gives you a figure then. So you'll have your total expenditure figure, your total income figure, and then what you're basically doing is, is the grant that you're asking from the agency. And remember, the agency will fund up to 75% of eligible costs. You have to find the rest. So we've um, we've worked a couple of examples here for you. Um, and this is your eligible cost. So 20 weeks tuition. Um, between the 1st of September and the 30th of April, maximum of two tutors with a minimum of five participants per tutor, maximum of two hours per week per instrument, uh, maximum tutor rates capped at £25 per hour for qualified tutor, hall rental rate is capped at £30 per week, and please bear that in mind, for example, if you're doing one part of your tuition on one night, and one part of your of the week and one part of your session on another night of the week. You can't claim £30 for each night, it's £30 per week. Your online license to deliver the tuition remotely up to a maximum of £130. And for strand two projects, so if you are doing accreditation, you can, all accreditations must be completed before the 30th of April 2022 and must be externally verified. More details in the guidance notes. And this is some worked examples. This one here is for an in-kind project. So on this one, your pipe tutor is £25 per hour by two weeks by 20 weeks. That's £1,000. Your drum tutor is £25 an hour by two hours by 20 weeks. Another £1,000. Hall rental, £600. There, your total cost is £2,600. Your in-kind rental is £600. So the maximum grant you could get from the agency would be 1,950. And that would mean your group would only need to provide 50 pound of your own money. Um, if you don't have the in-kind contribution and you're having to pay out the hall rental, then you have to find 650 pound. Uh, this is one where you don't have an in-kind contribution. So this one is a pipe tutor at a thousand pound, a drum tutor at a thousand pound, your hall rental is 600. Your online license for Zoom, say, for example, at £130. Your total cost there is £2,730. And your maximum uh, grant available from the agency is 75% of that, which is £2,047.50p. This is a worked example for Strand 2. Um, so your, your tutor cost at £2,000, your hall rental at £600, your online uh, license at £130 and on, for this one we've gone with seven OCN fees so this could be you know B flat flute tutor £26 a go times seven is £182 that would give you a total cost of 2912 uh, maximum grant from the agency is 2184 um, so that would leave you having to, to make up the difference um, between what the agency will give you and what the total cost of the project is and hopefully that's all clear enough um, for those projects in the Republic of Ireland who are applying, the euro rate has been set at uh, one euro equals 87 uh, pence, um, and that's going right across the board. You then come to, uh, you're in home straight now, so you're coming up to uh, part five. It asks you to upload supporting documents. Uh, you have to upload a current original bank statement, no more than two months old, or a bank printout or an online banking printout if you have online banking, signed by one of the authorised officers listed in your application. 
And we know it can be difficult sometimes getting stuff from banks. So if you have the ability to go in and get a printout or do an online banking printout yourself and then have one of the officers sign it, that's a quick and easy one to do. Um, if you're in the lucky position to have more than a thousand pounds in your bank balance, um, then you have to detail what your financial commitments are that, that mean you need the money from the agency. Basically, what this is here is if, for example, you've been saving up money to um, maybe you're going to go on a tour or you're going to buy new uniforms and at this precise moment in time, you're sitting you know, well in the black in your bank account, um, but all that money is accounted for. Basically, you just need to type up a small document that says, yes, we have £5,000 in our bank, but actually that £5,000 is towards buying new uniforms and you know that's what we're raising it for. That's all you need here. Um, you need to upload your, gov your organization's governing document or your constitution signed and dated by the current chairperson and a copy of your most recent annual account signed and dated in accordance with your organization's governing document. So if your government document says that you will produce set of accounts um, up between a certain point in the year and a, a, a another point in the following year, then the accounts that you submit must be in line with that. Um, or if they say, you know, we'll have them audited accounts, then you need to have them audited. Uh, part six is a declaration. So you fail, you completing this application form online and ticking the boxes as you go. Basically, your signature at this point is saying. Yes, we give the agency permission to discuss our proposal with other funding bodies and to which and any other public body to which we've applied for assistance. You have no objections to the agency placing the proposal with outside consultants as part of the appraisal or evaluation process. Uh, you understand the requirements to maintain accurate financial records and that these may be subject to examination. You are aware that you must tell the agency about any changes to the project immediately or any change in circumstance which is likely to impact on the application, including the provision of funding from another source. Uh, you have all the necessary safeguarding policies and procedures in place, and that you're complying with all re relevant statutory requirements, including things like disability access. The next section you get to is the um, fraud warning. Um, so by completing the application, you're making your statement that, you know, the organization and its representatives may be prosecuted if it knowingly provides false documents or false information or statements in support of the application for financial support. Um, no surprises here. If you're applying for money, you know, it's expected that the application and all the paperwork you submit around it will be genuine. And if it turns out it's not, there's a possibility, a very strong possibility that you'll be prosecuted. Um, and then basically they're saying, you know, that if they discover that there's anything false within that, it may result in prosecution. Um, and final note on this is around um, just because you've submitted your application does not mean that at that point it's safe to go and that you've been guaranteed the money. The agency um, will not commit to funding you until such times as you have received the letter of offer from them, you have signed it and returned it, and any necessary supporting documents that they require. Um, only when all that is done is there a commitment there to fund. Um, and again, all in the guidelines, um, no surprises here. And this is things around the documents that they ask you to return is they ask you to return a safe list and safeguarding checklist, for example, um, and that would be sent to you with the letter of offer and you have to sign it and check all the boxes and send it back. Uh, and at that point, then, you know, you'll be told, OK, your project's good to go. This is just a reminder because I think we've operated um, certainly over the last 18 months in a sort of virtual world. Um, there's there's been an awful lot of scams have happened and people have um, found out that, you know, they get an invoice for something and then it turns out that the invoice, the bank account has been isn't isn't genuine and the money disappears and you never get it back. So 
this is just a reminder about the need to make sure you know safe payment measures. Uh, before you make a payment, double check all the details to make sure you're paying the right person or company, that any services or goods you want to buy are genuine. Don't rely on an email, a text message or a caller ringing you to give the correct payment details. Check back with them to make sure that you're paying the right person. Last thing you want to discover is you've paid somebody money and they say, well, we didn't get it or we haven't got it, but the person who you were supposed to pay hasn't been paid and they expect to be paid and you're out of pocket. And if you haven't followed sort of safe procedures, then there's there's a chance your, your group's going to be out of pocket. Um, and the last bit of the application then is around safeguarding. Uh, so safeguarding policy and procedures adhere to current legislation and best practice. If you are successful in securing funding, you must complete a safeguarding checklist. The checklist must be completed and the group must be able to assure the agency that they are fully compliant with legislation and best practice. Um, any groups out there who need to update their safeguarding policy, they can contact the Ulster Scots Community Network. Um, we can give you a template policy that you can then uh, adopt for your own use. When it gets back to the point of um, delivering uh, verification visits as part of the process, it is likely that one of the things the agency will expect you to have clearly visible when they come to your premises is your safeguarding policy. So make sure it's on your notice board and that people know where your safeguarding policy is and what the requirements are. And again, any of your groups out there who are delivering tuition projects and need people access and I checked again for member groups that is available uh, through the Ulster Scots Community Network. Groups based in Northern Ireland should use the Northern Ireland safeguarding checklist that will be provided by the agency and groups in the Republic obviously are going to use the Child Protection and Welfare Policy checklist for the Republic of Ireland. I know that's been a very very quick run through um, and you haven't really had an opportunity to ask questions because we're doing this remotely but if you have any queries about it or you're in need of any assistance to make your application, you can contact the Ulster Scots Community Network uh, through either Alan McCormick, Matthew Warwick or myself, David Gilliland. Telephone number is there uh, on the screen. Um, you can also use our email at info at ulster-scots.com and we're more than happy to answer any questions and help in any way we can. Thanks very much.